Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry for the delay, everybody. Um, my name's Andrew Lee, uh, and I'm uh, um, presenting today uh, from Nottingham, from the University of Nottingham, uh, and I'm talking about a, a collaborative project between the University of Nottingham, the School of Health Sciences, and um, the uh, Nottingham University Hospital, Queen's Medical Centre. Uh, the the project in question is the development of a website uh, that I've been working on. Uh, and today I'm specifically talking about the educational component uh, in that website um, with a view to how that's evolved and the e-learning that, that's been involved. Uh, the first question really is what is the, the, the dream department? The, the dream department is the department that the, the website is being built for. And dream stands for the Department of Research and Education in emergency med medicine, acute medicine, and um, major trauma. Uh, it's, it's serving about 400 people in the ED department uh, uh, and uh, educating them. And its ethos is that it combines the education and the research that it conducts into clinical practice, and it advances patient care based on that. Uh, the department has several functions, two major departments, education and research. Uh, the education has internal components, uh, the, the 400 or so people within ED and other members of um, Nottingham University Hospital Trust. It also runs external courses where people external to the trust can come in and receive education in DREAM. Um, it has a simulation um, function. Members of the public can become simulated patients, take part in scenarios and um, uh, um, various workshops. And it has a big resource area, ECG banks, radiology banks, podcasts, uh, and, uh, and many others. Most of the education in DREAM is conducted in a classroom environment. Uh, traditional classroom teaching, uh, but a multitude of other uh, types of workshops, scenarios and simulations that I've already alluded to. Um, and that's great. Classroom teaching is, is uh, ideal for an awful, awful lot of what they, what they do. Uh, it's fun, it's engaging, uh, and it's flexible. There are, however, limitations with classroom education. Um, uh, you can't, in, in terms of numbers, you can't, there's a, there's a limited number of people that you can teach. Uh, there's a problem with the flexibility of space. If you want to teach three people, you're using the space that might be designed for 30 or 40 people. Uh, classroom teaching traditionally is time consuming, it takes a lot of effort to create the materials. Teaching can't be saved. And there's a specific issue in uh, emergency departments of coordination. So for example, you may arrange for a classroom uh, event and then there's uh, an, uh, a major accident. Uh, uh, members of the public can present with um, uh, medical issues that require the person that they've engaged in teaching. Obviously, the public always takes priority and so coordinating education is very difficult. These um, issues with classrooms are the issues of DREAM, uh, the challenges of DREAM when it needs to upscale. It needs to teach more people. It needs to find an answer to the problem of the inflexibility of space. It needs to um, have much more direct education with the with the people with the with the learner so that it's faster and it's more responsive there needs to be much higher productivity so that education can be recorded and saved and then um, uh, uh, learners can uh, see the recordings and they need to an answer to the coordination problem so that the the teaching uh, that they're providing fits in with their lives and the work styles um, 
of the, of the people that they're there to serve. There are two other uh, very big issues uh, involved with medical education, one of which is interprofessionalism. And for those of you not familiar with this term, it's about clinicians not being fully aware or not being fully confident to comment on the uh, behaviour of other clinicians. Uh, it's uh, attempting to deal with an issue termed siloing. Uh, nurses, when they go to university to learn to, to be a nurse, are taught wholly with nurses. Doctors are taught wholly with doctors. When these clinicians are thrown together, they need to work together and understand one another in the ED uh, department. And so that's an, uh, uh, an added challenge that DREAM needs to confront. There's also the speed of change of medical uh, research, um, which is happening at an alarming rate. It's reached the point now where doctors and nurses, when they begin their career in ED, their, their base knowledge is already out of date and, the educa and their education really begins on the first day and they need to be re-educated um, uh, uh, from the get-go. Uh, there have been three previous websites uh, where DREAM has attempted to answer these various problems. Uh, they've uh, fundamentally been passive websites and obviously websites answer the problem of of uh, teaching in terms of numbers of people because they reach everybody uh, and they uh, answer the, the problem of inflexible space because uh, of their own uh, flexibility so you can you can educate whatever numbers you want the biggest drawback with this type of um, website is that it requires developer input uh, and uh, um, that's time consuming uh, and uh, um, and that's always been a problem Faced with those challenges and the desire to upscale, at this point, DREAM approached uh, the School of Health Sciences at the university, um, and specifically a, um, a department uh, called HELM, which is the health and e-learning and media team in the School of Health Sciences. It's a specialist um, department uh, providing uh, learning materials, resources and objects for the School of Health Sciences uh, and the people who work there are specialists in web development, uh, uh, multimedia, audio, video uh, and, and those things. And then it was at that point I was seconded to the Dream Department in the role of project manager and developer. Um, uh, and at this point I can just make quickly be able to show you the the website. Nope. That's not what I want to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a dream website and it's a work in progress. At the moment we are uh, adding modules to it. It's a Drupal website. I'll explain what that means in a moment. So we're adding uh, modules to it. Um, we're also um, theming it. We're also mentoring the members of the Dream Department so that they can use it. Um, uh, but uh, I just thought I would just give you a little bit of a, this is the team or part of the team. Uh, this is the beginnings of the uh, educational components, the course components. Uh, current research projects, uh, archive research projects, uh, information uh, about uh, simulation, uh, radiology banks. Okay. Uh, and its address is Dream. Um, dot uh, ac dot uk so it's um, uh, an accredited uh, site okay now it's a drupal site now uh, uh, for those who are unfamiliar with content management systems drupal uh, um, is one of the big three content management systems um, uh, 
uh, along with WordPress and Magento. Uh, uh, it's free to use, it's open source, and uh, it's very similar to other VLEs like Moodle, uh, Blackboard in the sense that it's modular and you can add whatever functionality you, you need to. Uh, 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 to um, in, to uh, improve the upscaling problem, uh, uh, I decided on multiple content uh, authors, which is an important uh, aspect of the website. Uh, there's a vast array of different uh, uh, roles in clinicians, and they need to be taught by uh, clinicians similarly spread out. Um, so nurses taught by nurses, um, uh, doctors obviously taught by doctors, but the other array of roles taught specifically by people uh, with those roles in the education department. Uh, upscaling is aided by the modular aspect of the site, uh, so that it's responsive as you need to add new features, it's very easy to do. An example of one of those modules uh, is paragraphs, uh, which adds greatly to the functionality and the editing capabilities of the site, so content authors can create the kind of pages that they want to create. Something familiar to everybody who, who's used uh, Moodle is the idea of books. These are organized series of lessons, self-contained learning ob objects with contents pages, index pages, and uh, our books now is a, a part of Drupal 8. So in terms of upscaling, it allows learners to access uh, via a library uh, their learning easily. Uh, one other important feature of this new site is that the content authors will become developers. Uh, and I, uh, that all means that they'll be able to actually create the architecture and the design of the site and not just to uh, create the learning resources. That's important uh, in terms of ownership. If, if they feel that uh, it's theirs, then they'll be much more motivated to work with it. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, I would just like to mention the changing roles uh, now between developer and um, um, user. Uh, in this context, Helm has become um, a, uh, more of a consultant, um, providing pedagogical, pedagogical uh, know-how, maintenance of the site, um, um, help uh, very, uh, with technical issues that are particularly technical. Uh, but the, uh, the members of the uh, Dream Department now have, have taken on much more a of a role of developer. So they are ups able to upscale the, the site and the, uh, the site's architecture in the way that they um, want to. Uh, to summarise, uh, uh, the upscaling of, uh, of the educational component of, of this website uh, is alleviated in terms of uh, accessing numbers uh, uh, and flexibility of space purely by being an interactive website. All websites uh, answer those issues. There's wide departmental content authorship which gives um, direct uh, connection between the teacher and learner. So there's no recourse for developers to be involved in that process. Modules uh, aid upscaling through the wide variety of functionality and, and uh, access to resources that they offer. And finally, content authors now have much greater ownership of the website because it's been specifically engineered so that they can design the architecture of the website uh, as well as, as add content. Uh, in closing, uh, I think uh, my final remarks would be, really be to consider Drupal as a um, virtual learning environment in the same sense that you might consider Moodle, particularly if you, particularly if you need to uh, design uh, a website for a department such as, uh, such as Dream that has all other components, but the educational component is very good and is getting a lot better. 
Uh, Moodle, for instance, was fully integrated into Drupal 7, and I know that's planned with Drupal 8. Um, that conducts my, that, sorry, that concludes my uh, lecture about the evolution of e-learning in the Dream Department. And I'd like to thank you for your time, and I have a few minutes for questions. Yep, so we've got uh, one question on the Me Too. Oh, you can see it on the uh, iPad there. Oh, uh, very stable. We have uptime of 99.9, 99 99.8%. .9, 99 uh, the, uh, uh, the site is hosted with a company called UK Fast. Uh, it's an excellent company. Um, and uh, uh, that's their uptime. It's, it's, it's at that point, it's at that level. Is there any question in the room? Yep. Hi, thanks for making the presentation. I just have a question and it follows on from Amber's um, talk this morning where she talked about the business case as learning developers. Um, I'm just wondering what's in it for the university it, this is not a fee paying where they're not getting students into particular programs. So I'm just wondering, you know, this kind of request, is it a project, a specialist project, or will you cons or, or how is it is, is managed? This is something that's happening increasingly where I work in health sciences, our stakeholders are asking us to get involved in these types of projects. So just wondering if you can give some background to that. Um, there is, there is uh, money involved. Uh, the exter external um, course component of DREAM um, uh, me means that there's a revenue stream uh, that way so that external students have to pay to, to come to DREAM. And there are other revenue streams with, with DREAM. Uh, in terms of the, the School of Health Sciences, this is kind of, a, it's a great learning vehicle for them. Uh, it's, this is quite entirely new. It, it also gives a tremendous platform for a lot of the resources uh, uh, that are being created, for example, by Helm. Uh, um, and it, it's a, 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 an opportunity for a great deal uh, of, <coughs> of improved collaboration between Dream and between uh, Helm and the school. So, I mean, there's a lot in it, really, for both parties. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, we uh, will need to keep to time. So, thank you, uh, Andrew. And if we could uh, have a note of appreciation for Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.